Welcome to Christ the Healer with Don Allen. Hey, thank you for joining me tonight. This is Christ the Healer television program. So good to have you all along with me this evening. I'm very excited about tonight's program. Why, you may ask? Well, I believe that in maybe the next 27 minutes or so, I truly believe that your life could absolutely be flipped upside down. No, I really do. I do. I'm serious. Listen, we've been led to go back and we've been looking at all these individual healing miracles of Jesus. And so far, in just the past few weeks, we've already had viewers calling us back that are being healed. So, so just so that you understand what I'm talking about, I'm talking about they woke up in the morning and they were having an issue in their body. And, and that evening they saw a show that was called Christ the Healer and they had some expectation that, well, it says Christ the Healer, I need healed. And so they jumped on this program. They heard the word of God. It got into them and they went to bed with a miracle, one that they didn't have that morning. This ought to excite you this evening. And you know what? It shouldn't surprise us at all because you know what? Bible methods are still producing Bible results. Glory to God. So if it's a miracle or healing you need in your body, let's go back to the book. Let's go back. Let's look in the four Gospels of Jesus Christ right here. Let's look back and see exactly what it is that Jesus said. What did Jesus do? What did the sick person say? What did the sick person do? Because you know what? I know there's a lot of social media out there right now, and we got, well, he said that it's this way, and she said it's that way, and he said you got to have faith, and she said you didn't, and, well, he said it was my faith, and he said it was her faith, and look, let's just go back to the book and let's find out what it is that Jesus said. If we can see it in red letter, then that's all we need, right? We don't have to guess. We don't have to grab a general consensus. Let's just go back. Let's look in the Bible. Let's see what it is that Jesus said. And so that's what we're going to be looking at. And then how's this is, how did these people position themselves to walk away with a healing or a miracle in their lives? And then let's expect that if we see that in the Bible, like anything else that we see, Let's expect that we can have it in our lives tonight. Amen. We've made miracles and healing a denominational issue and a, and a doctrinal decree or something, and I'm not sure why. Did you know there's hundreds of scriptures, really hundreds of scriptures in the Bible that point to healing and point to miracles? And, and they're all wrapped up alongside scriptures that talk about forgiveness. Uh, they're wrapped in scriptures that also talk about salvation as well. And so I want to know who came along and used their doctrinal scalpel and thought, well, I'm just going to remove healing out of that section. And, and, and you know, I know he forgives, but he, I don't know. And they started cutting things out. Listen to me tonight. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, would we say that Jesus has ever forgiven somebody? Well, of course. I mean, we can go back in the Bible. We can see where Jesus forgave somebody. He's forgiven you before. So certainly nobody's arguing that one. Does Jesus heal people today? Or did that pass away? Well, no, nobody's arguing that one either. Will Jesus forgive somebody tomorrow? Well, of course he will. Sure he will. Nobody's wanting to fuss and fight and say, you know, we just, uh, we don't believe in forgiveness of sins here. No, we believe that Jesus paid the price. He forgives any body of anything all the time. Now, the worst sinner you know could come to him right now and ask for forgiveness and we know that Jesus would forgive them. I mean, you look at Saul, who became Paul, the killer of Christians. This man was forgiven and used by God. And I think that, well, if, if that is what took place, then I think I'm okay, you're okay, and they could be okay too. But now let's replace that word forgiveness with the word healing or miracle. And suddenly it's like, oh, now, wait a minute now, wait a minute now. Jesus doesn't heal anymore. Why? I'm asking why you would say that this evening. Did Jesus not also secure the rights at that whipping post to, to heal your physical bodies. He secured the rights to do so. So I want to know what scriptural basis that anybody has to say that Jesus is not the same yesterday, today, and forever. What scripture? I need the page. I need the chapter. It's in first imaginations. That's where it's at because I'm telling you what, I need a scripture that says that miracles died with the death of the last apostle. Most of you don't even know who the last apostle was that was alive. Healing was dispensational. He doesn't heal everybody today. I know some of you are saying that. If we can just get real tonight. Some of you are saying that because you know somebody that's passed away. And I understand. I get it. I get it. Let's just get into it tonight. Some of you are absolutely convinced that God has allowed a loved one or a friend of yours to pass away. And so you're taking a personal experience because you love God and you do. And that's not what's in question here. And you're creating a doctrine out of this thing. Well, I know good people that were sick and, and they died and God didn't heal. So I'm gonna ask you this. I just wanna ask tonight, do we have folks today that are not born again? And I'm just asking a question here. Sure we do, we have too many of them actually. So does that mean that God isn't saving people anymore? I mean, because I mean, there's millions of people that are not born again, that's my personal experience. Or would there be a part that the person would possibly need to play in order to be born again? I mean, I mean, could we dare say that if somebody's not born again that God had something to do with that? I wouldn't blame God for that. 
He's, he's secured everything we needed to be able to make the decision to be born again. Now, if you didn't know about it, that's one thing. That's where we have to begin to tell people. God provided a way for everybody to come and be born again at the moment that they discovered what it is that needed to be done. They can act upon the the power of that knowledge and go and accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, certainly. But when it comes to the topic of healing, I'm saying this out of a desire to see you set free this evening. Do you really believe that you just have the Bible all figured out so much so that you could say that, uh, well, you know what? I know that God doesn't heal. I mean, you really got it. You got it all figured out. You're saying that you got the Bible figured out to a complete understanding because certainly there couldn't be any more for me to discover or to know about healing and miracles. I did everything I know to do. So God is not healing people anymore. Could it be that you and I could dive into these miracles and possibly find some things that maybe, maybe we've missed. And then if we find those things, if we begin to apply those things, Maybe it's going to be the one key that's been that missing ingredient all along to see physical freedom. Could it be that we might be destroyed because of a lack of knowledge here about a few things, but maybe we could learn something and suddenly knowledge comes and the freedom from sickness and disease would come with it? I think we can find some things out in the Bible. Can I tell you that hundreds of people have called this ministry saying things just like that? They were just like some of you. Listen, we've had folks call that are angry at God. They were confused. They were saddened and didn't understand why they weren't seeing things take place. There was no results happening. And they think that they've done everything that they knew to do. And so God isn't healing everybody. And suddenly they begin to discover the truth of the word of God and it made them free. That's why you and I are going to go back and we're going to look at these individual healing miracles of Jesus tonight. So I'm going to ask you tonight, you got to lay aside everything that you think didn't work before the meetings you've been to, hands laid on you, don't think nothing happened to you. Give me about 20 more minutes here. Let's go back. Let's go see what got these people free in the Bible. I love Jesus. Jesus' results. And so I want to go look at these guys because they're just like us. Woke up one morning needing a miracle, went to bed with one that night. Praise God, it truly can happen to you tonight. It's, that's the reality. So I want you to get ready. Now, we've already seen a terminal leper healed. We've seen a woman with a fever healed. Uh, we've seen a man that was paralyzed. He was forgiven and healed, which brought up a great point that we suddenly remembered. Wait a minute, we got a benefits package over in Psalm 103 that says God forgives all of our sins and he heals all of our diseases. It's a benefit. You didn't pay for it. He gave it to you. It's a benefit. It came to you for free. We saw a nobleman's son who was healed by Jesus just speaking a word, telling that father to go on, and his boy was made whole. Tonight's miracles recorded three times in the Bible. We're going to look at one of those accounts tonight. Now I'm going to encourage you to go back and look at all three of those if you would. But this one's found in Matthew 12. It's in Mark 3. It's in Luke 6. Now I'm going to go look at Dr. Luke's account. I love Dr. Luke, right? He's going to give us some details, as doctors do, about these issues. So Luke 6, verse 6. It came to pass also on another Sabbath that he entered into the synagogue and he taught. Now, we see this with a lot of these miracles. Jesus' teaching was involved. Why do I bring that up? I think sometimes we've created uh, this idea that for me to have a miracle, it's got to be wrapped up in this atmosphere of a service, right? We got to have the right speaker. We got to name it the right thing. We got to have the right music. And it's, it's, we got to have this atmosphere that's just set and, and, and then I can have a miracle. And we think it's got to be this wild service if I'm going to be healed. And you know what? It could be one of those, but that's not what's required to have a miracle tonight. Proverbs 4 told us God's words are life and health or even medicine to our flesh. So we see that in some of these stories. Jesus is teaching. He's providing them the life-giving word. He's giving them the medicine, if you will. And that's why you can have a miracle tonight in your home because we're going to give you the, the word of God. So Jesus is teaching. And the second thing that teaching does is, of course, we know faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. He's providing them something to believe in. He's not going to hold them accountable for what they don't know. So what is he going to do? He's going to give them something to grab a hold of. He's providing them something. He's teaching them. And so here's a man whose hand is withered, it says. Dr. Luke's going to tell us it was his right hand that was withered. It's drawn up. It's pulled in. You've seen people like this before. Verse 7, and the scribes and the Pharisees watched him. Now, here's some very highly educated men. They've got degrees in theology, but that's not bad in and of itself. But let me tell you, you can know the Greek and the Hebrew, and you still don't know Jesus. I hope you're hearing me tonight. These men had some information. They knew about God, but they had no relationship. They knew the writings of Christ and yet did not recognize him as the very son of God standing right in front of them. So so they're watching him. Why? To see whether he would heal on the Sabbath day so they can find an accusation against him. A couple things to note again. I love this. Isn't it amazing that here's these guys that don't, they don't even like Jesus. They don't follow Jesus, but look at their expectation. They absolutely knew that if there was a sick person in the room, that Jesus was going to heal them. 
Look at, look at the expectation that they had. They don't even like him, and yet they knew every time if there's a sick person, he's going to heal them. It's just, you know, he's going to do it on the Sabbath. That was their problem. They never questioned the miracles. They never said he can't work a miracle. No, they were just mad because they knew he was going to work a miracle. It was just going to mess with their little doctrine. You know, your doctrine needs a little messed with, I think, tonight. So here it is. They understood this, that it was just the Sabbath day was the problem. Now, look, we still got some folks like this. I've had ministers walk right into our meetings before and tell me that miracles are not for today. And, and they've told me that what we're teaching is unbiblical right to my face. And you know what I did? I did just what Jesus is about to do here. Did you understand that a miracle will settle the issue? I don't need to argue. This book wasn't made for arguing. It was made for believing, glory to God. So I didn't need to argue with them. I'll show you the, the book of God and the God of, book, of the book here, and it's still going to do what it is that it does. So I love this because I, I know what man has said about it. But again, I want to look at what Jesus is saying here. So these men are sitting there. Jesus is teaching. I suppose it was probably a message that was going to be worth hearing that day, but they just couldn't concentrate because they knew that a sick man plus Jesus, that equals a miracle every single time. Do you remember our story by the man brought by four? You remember the part where it says Jesus perceived their thoughts? They obviously did not learn their lesson, verse eight, but he knew their thoughts. He knew their thoughts. And he said to the man which had a withered hand, he said, rise up, stand forth in the midst. And he rose up and he stood forth. I love this because Jesus never played it safe. I love that about him. He never buckled under the pressure. And so here's Jesus. He knows what these guys are thinking. So he goes and he's, he's going to bust this thing wide open right where they're at. Oh, I get it. Here's a guy with a, a physical infirmity. That's fine, sir, please. You go ahead, stand up. Stand up right in front of everybody right now. You go ahead and stand up. This is what he's telling him. So can I say this to you tonight? This man knows there's opposition in the room. It doesn't take a psychiatrist to know when folks really aren't into it. But uh, there's tension in the air, and, and there's some guys in there that don't care one ounce about this man's condition at all. They just want to get Jesus. They want to catch him breaking some rules so they can have something on him. So I'm going to challenge you tonight as we do on this program. God's been leading us to do this. I want you to stand to your feet tonight. What do I mean by that? I mean that you've been sitting back. You've been ignoring your condition. Some of you have had it so long, nobody at church even notices anymore. But you know it. You live with it. And so now you kind of feel like you've just been simply overlooked, and, and nobody Nobody cares anymore. I mean, it's been with you for so long. Nobody at church is even praying about your condition anymore. A man with a withered hand was sitting in church and nothing was happening. And so this is the condition with you possibly. And so what happens is you've had it so long, you've adapted to the bondage. Jesus is calling you out tonight. Now, I want you to listen to me. I want you to stand up right now. Jesus saw it, and he took issue with it, and he wasn't going to leave it that way. And I want you to call the number on the screen tonight right now, and here's what you're going to do. You know how this works, right? You're going to leave me a message. Listen to me. We're getting amazing results back. Why? Because here's what we do here. We listen to every single message personally, and then we take that request, and we pray, and we take it to the Holy Spirit of God that knows all things, and we ask him what you need. You don't need a scripted prayer. You need to know what Holy Spirit is saying to you tonight and that's what we're going to do is we're going to take that request we take it to him we dial your number and we call you back would you trust us with it tonight i hope you can because we're trusting holy spirit and this is how you're going to stand up to be seen i'm not going to allow you to sit back and get lost in the crowd suffering jesus is calling you out tonight so this is what you're going to do this is what we've been doing this is what god's been showing us to do on the program you're going to call me tonight and you're going to say donnie i'm standing up against and you just fill in the blank right there you go ahead and name it. I'm standing up against drug addiction. We've had two people on meth call in the last two weeks. Glory to God. So I'm standing up tonight against cancer. I'm standing up against pain. Donnie, I'm standing up against arthritis. I'm no longer going to hide. I'm standing up against MS and heart disease and, and, and blindness. I want you to call us right now, and I want you to stand up. No more hiding. No more sitting back. You call the number right now, and you tell us what you're standing against, and then we're going to join with you in that stance. And watch. Here's what's going to happen. Here's the rest of the story right here. Jesus stood up, not ashamed of the truth. He, he's, he's not playing it safe. I think we ask the wrong question sometimes. Well, Donnie, what do we do when it doesn't work? Now, the question is, what do you do when it does? Glory to God, because it does work. What happens when it does? So Jesus busts these guys out, looks them right in the eye in verse 90, and then Jesus said to them, I'm going to ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save a life or to destroy it? He wanted a reply. If they say to do evil, well, nobody likes that answer. Jump right over to Matthew 12 with me real quick here. Jesus says this before asking the question. In Matthew 12 and verse 11, he said this, And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that will have one sheep, and if he falls into the pit on the Sabbath day, he will not lay hold on to it and lift that out? They understood this. They had sheep. He's putting them on the spot. What will you do? Will you leave that sheep in the hole, or would you get him out? And they had no answer. But we know the answer. 
They knew the answer, glory to God, that if you had a sheep on any day, it didn't matter if it was the Sabbath or not. If he fell in a hole, would you leave him or get him out? They knew the answer. And so let's look at it like this then. Maybe, maybe, maybe animals don't do it for you, right? Maybe you don't have very much compassion about animals. So let's say this then. Let's say mama's in the kitchen. She's cooking something. She cuts her hand really bad, and it's going to require medical attention. Do you leave it, or do you take her to go get it attended to? Wait a minute now. Just listen to me. I'm going to go somewhere, because here's the thing. What if it was the will of God for her to lose a finger? Oh, I know that sounds morbid, but just follow me now. What if she was angry earlier and, and, and she was mad about having to be in the kitchen and she cussed and maybe she looked at another man or I don't know. And, and I mean, is this God's way of telling her not to do that? I, I mean, God's getting her attention to get those unclean thoughts out of there and get his mind back onto her maybe. I mean, I don't know. Would you get down on your knees and ask God if it was his will for you to help your mama and go to the hospital or would you just go and get it taken care of? Yeah, I'm being a smart aleck tonight about as much as I know how. Listen, baby chokes on something and, and it's stuck in their mouth. Well, you know, I mean, what would we do? Would, would that be the will of God? Or do we immediately, without even thinking, we go and remove that thing and we do everything we can to help that baby? No prayer asking God about his will. Because, you know, I mean, it would be sin if we were to help that baby and it was God's will for the child to choke. I mean, I don't know. I mean, come on now, listen. Is it the will of God for you to be sick? Because if it is, why are you going to the doctor? If that's what you believe, why are you going to the doctor to try to get out of the will of God? Why are you taking prescriptions and treatments trying to get out of the will of God? I want to know. I know I'm being ridiculous tonight, about as ridiculous as anybody saying that it's the will of God to make somebody sick, break somebody's leg or teach them through cancer, punishing them uh, for their sins through sickness. Well, that would be legal for us to inject our children with poison, I guess, when they mess up. I mean, because that's what you're saying about God here. That, yes, he's a loving father. He gave his son to die for us, but don't you cross him because he'll break your leg so that he can put you in a hospital so that you're going to spend time looking in your Bible and get right with him. I had a preacher tell me that happened to him. Come on now, we make God the absolute most sadistic child abuser ever known to man, and then we want people to follow him? Are you kidding me? I'll take my chances out here without your God, thank you. Millions associate sickness and disease in their lives with God's will for them. He's a child abuser. Without one single scripture to back up what it is they're saying, not one story about Jesus making people sick, right? I mean, if Jesus is the will of God in human form, where's the stories about Jesus just doing the Father's will and making somebody sick. I mean, if he had the power to heal, shouldn't he have the power to kill? Oh, wait a minute. That's somebody else who steals and kills. And that scripture, it's somebody else. Well, our church doesn't believe that way. It's just a doctrinal difference. No, it isn't. It's satanic. It's evil. And it's antichrist. I'm going to call it what it is. It's, blas it's blasphemous, guys. It's unscriptural. It's got nothing to do with doctrines. It's got nothing to do with de denominational beliefs. It is blasphemous to blame God for the work of the devil. Period. Jesus asked, what would you do? Animal falls in a hole. Would you hit the dirt next to the hole and cry out, Father, what is thine will? Do I save thine animal or do I let him rot? I don't know. I don't want to be out of your will, Father. If you have a mysterious plan for animal, I don't want to interfere. So easy to see somebody else suffering and say, well, if it be thine will, let it be you. And it's all hands on deck. I need 10 elders over here at the house right now praying. I need on the bulletin prayer list, and I better be at the top. And somebody needs to sit out a jar for money to pay for my medical bills. But guess what? If it's according to your belief, none of that would matter if you're going against the will of God anyway. You don't even believe your own doctrine tonight. Listen, Jesus compared the healing of this man to an animal in distress. We get so mysterious about rescuing a human from bondages and diseases, and yet you don't think five seconds when you go rescue a cat out of a tree. You've never hit the dirt and said, Father, is it thine will that I should rescue thine cat from the tree? You don't even think five. Come on, listen to me. Jesus made this so simple. Listen, I'm tired of preachers copping out and saying, well, you just never know. God moves in mysterious. No, he doesn't. God doesn't move in mysterious. You just never know. That's like saying water's wet. You've not said nothing. Come on, listen to me. I know, I know, because I got a story right here in front of my face that's telling me. I don't have to guess what Jesus would do. I have a true story about a man whose hand was withered. And here's what Jesus said. Here's what the man said. No mystery at all. I know what he said to a leper. I know what he said to a woman with a fever. I know what he said to a man brought by four and a nobleman's son. And I'm about to know right now if you would leave a man sick and diseased and withered, or if you'd heal him, I don't have to guess. It's right here in the book. Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, because God was with him. Isn't that what we're talking about here? We're talking about doing good and healing all. And if you didn't know, well, there's your scripture.
<laughs> this is no mystery. If you want to know what Jesus was anointed for, it's for this right here, anointed to do good and to heal everyone that's being oppressed of the devil. You mean oppressed by God. Because that's what you're saying if he's making people sick. It says oppressed of the devil. And he did. Luke 6, he asked a question. If you had a sheep in a ditch, would you pull Fluffy out of the hole or not? What would you do? It's unbelievable to me that we are so more concerned about saving the whales than saving a fellow human being. So what's the key to the miraculous here? You remember when we, we always have a God side and a man side to every story here. And we said, we want to see what it is that Jesus said and did. We want to see what it is that the sick person said and did. So what's the key on our side? Well, it's what Mary, the mother of Jesus, said at that very first miracle that Jesus performed. She said this at the, at the water to wine. She said this, whatever he says, do that. Whatever he says, do that. See, doubt and unbelief begins to argue and fuss about it. Faith simply believes, receives, and gets to moving. Jesus told this man to stand up, and all the time this guy's standing there, Jesus is talking about rescuing Fluffy the sheep out of a hole, and, and he could feel the tension in the air. And so here, would you guys rescue an animal or not? Nobody's saying anything, but everybody knows the answer. I want you to call me tonight. Listen, I want you to leave a message, and I want you to say these words, Donnie, I know that God is rescuing me from. No, come on, listen. See, you know the answer. He's asking you, if you would rescue this animal, then would I heal you? You already know the answer, so I want you to call me and fill in the blanks. You know this. You know the answer to the question already. Would you save an animal that's in a mess? You know the answer, Donnie. I know that God is rescuing me from the hole of sickness. He's pulling me out of a ditch of disease right now. I want you to call the number because we're going to see a miracle in your life tonight. Donnie, I know that God is rescuing me. You call me tonight and you say those words. When did we ever see Jesus not rescue somebody from sickness and diseases and pains that they were in? So he tells this man, he said, you stand up. In Luke 6 and verse 10, here we go. And looking round about upon them, he said unto the man, stretch forth your hand. Well, Jesus, wait a minute now. Here's the thing, right? My hand is withered. I mean, it's drawn up. That's the problem. I, I, I can't. I mean, I've tried a million times. Believe me, Jesus, I, I've... I've done all I know to do, Jesus. What do you mean, stretch forth my hand? I can't. That's the issue. I mean, if God would do something, then I would stretch forth my hand. How do you walk away from leprosy clean? How do you go from a dangerous fever uh, a second ago to fever free? How do you go from paralyzed to walking and forgiven? How does a boy rise up out of his deathbed? They do it by faith. Faith comes by the hearing of the word of God. See, tonight you've tried everything that you think that you know to do. Listen to me. I'm now telling you under the unction of the Holy Spirit of God tonight, Jesus spoke these words. And when Jesus commanded this man to stretch forth his hand, don't miss this. He was not trying to convey a message. He was not trying to communicate a point. Watch what Jesus, when he spoke these words, it created a thing. Come on, listen to me now. This is how God created man. He spoke us and Jesus is speaking and he's commanding that man to stretch it forth. I know you tried it a hundred times times and failed, but this time Jesus is speaking, and under that command is the power to do it, and if you'll apply the faith necessary, how much? Jesus said about the size of a mustard seed. That's about as much as you need right there for a miracle tonight in your life. What's mustard seed? It's simply moving without the knowledge, but doing it anyways because of the source, because Jesus said so. That's about the best way I can sum it up for you right there. And, and so you don't have all the details, but Jesus spoke. And because of the source, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to obey him by faith. And he provided the power for that miracle. When that man tried a hundred times before, look at it now, Jesus spoke. And I've been telling you guys tonight to stretch forth and, and to call the number on the screen. That's all I'm doing here is I, I need you to stretch stretch it forth tonight by faith. You got you to gotta stretch your faith a little bit tonight. All Jesus was saying is, I need you to go as far as you can go by faith, and I'm going to meet you right where you're at tonight. He told this man, watch this now. He said, stretch forth your hand. And it says, and he didn't, no, no, he didn't try. He didn't try anything. Donnie, I've tried. No, no, no. Uh -uh. And he did so. And this man went as far as he could go. And when that man reached all the end of what medical science could do in that hand, when he reached the end of, of all that he could think to do in himself, all of a sudden when he reached the very end of everything in the natural that he could do, he reached the very beginning of everything that God would do for him. And that man stretched forth his hand and it was restored as the other. 
I did a teaching on this exact miracle a few years ago on another program, and a man who had been shot in the arm was watching that night. He took a bullet to his arm. It messed up tendons, it messed up muscles, and it caused his hand to be drawn up. And he got a hold of us, and he said, man, I've been to rehab. We tried to rehab the hand. They did surgeries. They did all these things, and I could never get my hand to open back up. And he said, I was watching that show, and he's like, man, that's exactly what I'm suffering with. I have a withered hand. And he was listening to that program, and this is what he did. He said, I put myself in that miracle. He said, and the moment that you said that, he said, stretch forth your hand. And when you said you reached all the end, he said, man, I've tried a hundred times, man. What do you mean? And he said, but when I heard you say, no, no, no. Now it's under the unction. When Jesus says a word, it provides the power to do. And he said, for the first time, I didn't try it. I did it. And he stretched forth his hand and he said, my hand was made whole. Guys, I'm telling you, when it was after he stretched forth his faith one more time. So I'm asking you tonight, one more time, you go pick up the phone, you call me, you email me. I know, I know, 100 times before, I know, but no more trying tonight. Tonight, we become doers of the word, a word that works, a word that manifests. This word isn't just for reading. This, this word is spoken so that it will do, so that it will manifest in your life tonight. So you're going to call me, and you're going to call tonight. You're going to call the number, and I want you to tell me tonight, Donnie, I am stretching out my faith tonight for a miracle. I want you to call tonight. We're not charging you no money for this thing. You can't buy a miracle. It's already been paid for. You just got a call. We're going to ask Holy Spirit what it is. What's that missing thing that we need to find that we can speak to you? That'll be that faith key that's going to unlock that thing in you to be able to stretch forth and you get your miracle tonight. You call the number right now. You might be at the end of all that it is that you can do. I'm telling you tonight, by faith, when you stretch forth, you're going to reach the beginning of every single thing that Jesus can do. You call, you leave us a message tonight. He's about to rescue out of of the hole of sicknesses and diseases and pains and addictions tonight in Jesus' name. Hey, thanks for watching tonight. Let me take just a moment here to talk to you about this miracle of Jesus, a a man with a withered hand. I love how Jesus tied in this story about uh, an animal that was in distress or an animal that was in a ditch. Guys, we have tried to make this so hard when it comes to humans. What if we saw a human in a ditch? What if we saw somebody that fell in a well or a hole? I mean, we would go and rescue them. And that's all that Jesus was saying is, guys, it's the same mentality. It was built on the inside of us to be just like our Father God, that when we see people hurting, man, we we have compassion on them. Let this move you out of compassion and understand that's all that Jesus was saying. It's the love that he has for you is why he would go and rescue you. So I want you to make sure that you call the number tonight. Get a hold of us tonight. We want to minister to you. We want to help you get up out of the... Listen, we can't make you get out of the hole, but we can help you get out of the hole. And that's all we want to do tonight. Get a hold of us tonight. Stretch out by faith and believe that you're going to get out of that hole in sickness and disease. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us today on Christ the Healer with Don Allen. We encourage you to connect with us on Two Guys in a Bible Facebook page and view daily posts on healing. For more information about Christ the Healer and this ministry, go to twoguysinabible.com. You'll find products that are helpful in confirming that God is willing to heal and He's still doing it today. Take this opportunity to receive a free audio collection of 101 healing scriptures on CD. Find out what happened when the High Witch of the Four Corners confronted a group of believers at a tent revival. Seven Days with the Witch by Don Allen. Order your copy today by going to twoguysinabible.com. For additional teaching and great programming, listen to the 1412 Radio Network. Get online and type in 1412.com and select Listen Now. If you need to contact us for prayer or you'd like to schedule Don to come and speak in your area, you can call or send an email message and someone will contact you. So thanks again for joining us and we'll see you next time on Christ the Healer.